So what if I told you that LiveScope is actually improving your fisheries and you're just not even realizing it? On today's video, I'm gonna kinda try to explain why. So if you're in that low bottom majority that just absolutely hates forward-facing sonar, let me explain how it can help you catch bigger fish. I mean by help you catch bigger fish, that doesn't mean you need to have it. This goes for everybody watching the video. Like if you don't have it or you do have it, you know, it's whatever. But in my honest opinion, before this video even starts, I don't want to hear no crap down below. Live scopes fishing in a barrel, blah, blah, blah. That's not what this video is about. Because honestly, the people that have it don't complain about it. And the people that don't have it complain about it. And that's just the truth. And I'm not saying you can't afford it. So if you're personally attacked by that, then if the shoe fits. So let's jump right into this video. You know, it's going to be a little discussion, talking video. We're gonna, I'm going to do some work while I talk. And hopefully, maybe enlighten your mind to a couple things that it's going to be in the future because it's not going away, guys. Like, you know, it may be banned from some higher-end bass tournaments, but in the crappy world, LiveScope's here to stay. So, we're just going to jump right in this. Say you have a buddy. Let, let's name him Jim Bob. So, we've got Jim Bob. Jim Bob buys him a 20-acre pond. All right, you know, a, a reasonably sized pond. It could be a five acre pond. It could be a, a 50 acre pond, which is absolutely huge. Um, Jimbo noticed there's there's no crappie in the pond. He just got, you know, some big old large mouth, uh, some big a bull bluegill and shad and creek chubs and maybe a couple catfish. So Jimbo's like, well, I'm gonna go buy me some crappie. And I'm gonna put them in there. So Jimbo goes and he buys them however many crappy it takes to stock a 20 acre pond. I have no idea. And he stocks them, their little fingerlings, whatever. And he waits about a year. Jimbo's like, well, you know, the crappy out there in the pond been growing for about a year. I put me a bunch of brush piles out. I got a couple stumps marked. I'm gonna take me some crappy man jigs out there and I'm gonna go catch me one. So he goes out there, he throws a crappy man green little minnow out there on a 132 ounce jig head. Instantly gets him a bite because you know that's what they do. <laughs> and it's a, a six, seven inch crappy. Jimbo's like, all right. So he catches a few more and they're all relatively around the same size, six, seven inches. So Jimbo's like, well, I'm going to wait till next year. So Jimbo waits a year. The spring go, comes and goes, the crappy go through a spawn, the females lay tens of thousands of eggs in this pond, and then you have a hatch. So Jimbo's like, well, now they gotta be big enough to go make me a diagonal sandwich out of. So Jimbo goes out there, he catches them a couple more. Seven to nine inches. Okay, you know, the nine inches, kinda big enough to keep, kinda bit, but you know, he throws them back. He wears them out. He catches probably 30 of them this size. Throws them all back. Okay. So Jimbo's like, well, maybe they need another year. I'll go catch me a couple of these bass for dinner. Whatever. So Jimbo waits another year. Another spring pass. There's another spawn. The females lay tens of thousands of eggs. Now, these fish have been repopulating about three to five years. Jimbo goes out there, he fishes his favorite little brush pile, puts on a crappy man jig. Boom. Seven to nine inches again. But the more he caught with those, the smaller they got. Now you've got four to five inches. Now you've got just tiny, tiny ones. So Jimbo's like, what the heck? He throws them back. He waits another year. He goes out there. Same thing. And we're just going to repeat this process over and over and over again. Now, you know, I'll let y'all in the comments what's happening to Jimbo. Why isn't his crappy getting bigger? I'll give you a couple minutes. Like the video. Subscribe if you haven't. And if you answered that there is no management that is 100% correct. And when you're on your home lake, <clears throat> there's a thing called a coal limit. So here in South Carolina, we've got a coal limit of 
20 fish over 80, 80, <laughs> 20 fish over eight inches. Now, everybody can go out there and catch the same amount of limit per day. Now, don't get me wrong, catch thousands upon thousands of fish every year. But that doesn't dent into the tens of thousands and thousands of eggs that are hatched every year to repopulate the crappie. Now, what I'm saying is, how does forward facing sonar tie all this together? What happens is Jimbo's buddy, you know, we'll, we'll call him Bob. Bob goes out there, you know, he's been crappy fishing for about two or three years. He can't catch a dang broads out of a barn. Every now and then he might catch one or two. Now he goes out there and he buys him a live scope. Now I'm not going to sit here and say that you can just plug it in and go catch fish, but I'm not going to sit here and say that you can't plug it in and go catch fish if you watch enough YouTube videos on how to use it. Or you hire somebody like me that teaches electronics out on the water. But but Jimbo's buddy Bob, you know, he he, hire, he gets him a, a live scope and he goes out there and he's able to catch, you know, five to ten fish when he goes out. So he can come home and make him a sandwich. But Jimbo's got his pond over there that's overpopulated, no management. And what he needs to be doing is catching fish and throwing them in the bushes or using them as fertilizer or something. So his other fish have enough room to go eat the minnows and shad and get bigger. But I still haven't tied all this in together. So that's what we're about to do. We're about to tie all this in together. So how does forward facing on our help your lake? It gives more fishermen an opportunity to get out there and catch more fish. Plain and simple. It's letting, you know, people, I'm not, I'm not calling you amateurs. I'm not calling you whatever. It honestly ain't going to break my heart to call you an amateur, but it lets people go out there and catch more fish than let's say seven to eight years ago. And what that's doing is it's getting all the small fish out the way. You know, these people, 98.9% of people cannot go out there and catch a two pounder when they want to. You know, hell, I can't even do that. So all in all, what I'm trying to say with this is LiveScope gives people the ability to actually manage your lake better. Yeah, DNR puts in a limit. That doesn't mean that the fishermen are actually going to be able to go out there and catch them. Because honestly, there's not a lot of people that are going to go out there and spend an hour to five, six hours hunting for that one big fish. Besides people like me that make videos or tournament fish. Because it's a lot funner just going out there catching a limit and going home. And the majority of people, that's what they're going to do. And what that's going to end up doing is letting your fish grow. So the more people that are out there actually catching fish and watching this channel and learning how to do it, the more your fishery is going to improve over time. Now, uh, LiveScope's only been out six years, but it's only been popular for about two to three years now. I mean, uh, two years, probably where people start to realize that it's really effective at finding the fish. You still can't make a bite. Don't get me wrong. <clears throat> but I believe in the next 10 years, as, as people start to improve and everything, you're going to have a lot harder to catch bigger fish, but you're going to have a lot bigger quality of fish if you're able to find them. I mean, everything's going to change. You know, they call it like a meta like the most effective tactic available. And right now that is forward facing sonar with no questions asked. But there's probably gonna be, you know, improvements to it, uh, different techniques coming out for it. I've got a little sneaky technique that I was trying to perfect before I had to sell mine. Hopefully we were able to get enough money up to buy another one before the spring, but is what it is guys. But I just kind of wanted to, to kind of explain to you guys that not all things forward facing sonar is horrible. Like watching it on TV, it sucks. I, I'll admit that. I agree with everybody that says that, you know. But actually using it, if you don't own it, you don't know how much skill it actually takes to identify, to find. Uh, the amount of time on the water it takes to perfect the technique of sniping fish out in the middle of the lake because i don't 
know how many videos I got to say this, guys. For every 100 feet of water, there is crappy swimming everywhere. But I hope y'all like this sit-down video talking, doing a little work, trying to get caught up. Uh, orders are probably a week and a half behind, I'm not going to lie. I'm doing everything I can. I had, I had some health issues with my wife. So, uh, we're getting them out, though. Oh, but I'm going to catch y'all in the next video.